So good morning everybody. Here's where we're at today. First of all, this video may be out of order. I don't know about the sequencing. There's a couple different parts of this video that I want to put together. So I don't know about when it's gonna get aired or how it will fit into my normal travel life. But today, something very, very important is going to happen on the RV. As you know, for me, I rely heavily on having a cell tower nearby in order to upload videos, in order to navigate, and in order to interact with my viewers on the road. It's very important for me to have cell towers, and oftentimes I will get to places that either don't have any service, or have very weak service, or have very slow transfer speeds for data. Over the last year, I've heard lots of people talk about cell boosters being installed in their RVs, and I've been looking into this a lot to the point where I realized it is time that I get my own. And as it turns out, right when I was looking, a company called WeBoost, also Wilson Electronics, reached out to me, and although this is not a paid advertisement, they did send me one of their RV-specific units for free to install in the RV, review, and share it with my viewers. That way, in case I like it and I could share it, that it works, maybe somebody else might also want to get it as well. So, I'm gonna show you this on top of my buddy's Plymouth here at the shop, but uh, this is the 32 times better RV cellular signal booster, the Drive 4GX for RV. A couple of things I just want to clar clarify about this unit. It's different than a booster that grabs Wi-Fi from like McDonald's or out there at Starbucks or something like that. That would be a booster that you place inside your RV that tries to grab Wi-Fi signal that's available in week. You can grab that Wi-Fi and you can pull it into your RV to get it. What this does is it, it grabs the cell towers themselves. It grabs data and voice signal from cell towers and it brings it into the RV and then it amplifies it just inside the RV. Like I think this one is rated, you need to be within three to nine feet of the receiver part of this that's gonna be in the RV. So the RV parked next to me is not gonna be stealing my boosted amplified uh, signal that I have inside the RV. The other thing about the install itself is it works on class A, B, C's, trailers, everything. It talks about putting the antenna outside preferably and then having a distance between that and where the booster is stored and powered. And then the blue line, this is the antenna uh, where I get the signal from inside. You'd want to have that even five to ten feet away from that. So the, you want to have this dynamic range to not get interference basically. So essentially there's some, there's some planning involved here and logistics on how you want to install this. This thing includes everything. It has a, a whole saw kit in it so you can drill right into your RV. It also has the uh, cap to hide the wires. Hopefully I will not be drilling any new holes into the RV. I have holes that I can tap into, I believe. But this kit comes with an antenna mount for the ladder, which I think is a great, most RVs and trailers are gonna have this ladder. So, I think we're gonna put it up there on the top of my ladder and then run the wire back and go back through where my solar connection is and then we'll find a spot inside. It's said to work with all of the major networks, so AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint, any of those, it's gonna be able to be compatible with that 3G, 4G, LTE. Uh, it's not just going to help with your cell phone. I mean, I know that's what a lot of people are gonna use it for, for getting their navigation to work when there's no service at the campground, sending an email. Uh, it's for voice calls, it's for data. Data is the real key. So I think that this is gonna be very unique. I don't think a lot of people have used it for that, but when you think of data, this is my Wi-Fi hotspot device. This is how I get all of my 500 to 600 gigabytes a month use out of uploading videos, watching Netflix, uh, watching Mariners through my PS4 live on the road. This device requires a cell tower. This is a data device. And so the Drive 4GX signal booster is going to be used on this as well. This is going to grab that boosted signal, hopefully, and I will be able to have my continued unlimited internet through this device amplified through the new booster. That's my goal anyway. But let's open this up and let's see what we got in the package. So we will take a very quick look inside and see what all comes with this. It's got directions and a phone number you can call in case you need more help and a user guide. Inside the big box are two little boxes. Box install A and box install B. Box A has two more boxes. It has step one, which is the antenna, which we're doing first. And that includes step two, three, six, and eight. So we will have to open the other box in between to get five and seven before, but... Mount the antenna outside to a pole or ladder so that the entire outside antenna, antenna is above the roof line of the RV and clear of other metal obstructions. There's the antenna there. And there's the brackets for installing it on the ladder. 
All right, so I attached the uh, L bracket to the bottom of the antenna, like the directions say. There's that part, and then we'll move on to step two. So step two is this whole bit drill. It says drill into your RV unless, A, you're using an existing cable entry point, which we are. So we aren't doing that. We're going to go with an existing hole. Next step is going to hook up this coax cable and run that through my old solar wiring hole. So I got the cable going across underneath one solar panel. And then we come over here. I drilled out the old hole, which I had already had drilled for the solar uh, wires that go down there. Coax goes down there. The kit comes with a new cap, which is kind of convenient. So that cap will go on there with the wires. And the only thing this kit really didn't come with is the die core self-leveling to seal this back up afterwards, but I have some still left over. And then the last thing to do, the kit comes with these uh, stake downs with zip ties that you put through so that I can secure this to the roof without drilling any more holes in the roof. So that'll be the last step. Alrighty, so steps four and five are to mount the booster device, which has the smaller connection right there, uh, to mount that and to hook up the wire. What I'm gonna do is probably run the wire into this cabinet and mount this device on the back side back there uh, to get it as far away as possible. Also close to a power source, I have both DC available by the security camera or I can run an AC underneath. So I'm gonna mount this on the back, back there. I'll just mention, I will assume there will be some drilling involved for most people. But like I said, my security camera wire already goes through that cabinet, goes up there and comes back out. So I'm just utilizing some of the old holes I drilled. You're not gonna hurt anything by putting holes in the cabinets up there to try to hide some of this. So on the other side of the cabinet, you can see how much came out. I've got about uh, eight, 12 inches coming out. And this hooks into the bottom part of the booster, freeing up the top one to go to the interior antenna. So I'm gonna mount this right there and that coaxial cable will go into the bottom of this booster. So I skipped ahead a little bit. Uh, I already grabbed the tabletop antenna and plugged it into the top. I did that just for clearance because it's gonna be really hard to do once I click this in. So don't mind this, I've just skipped ahead. I'm going to uh, mount this guy up here where it's gonna go, maybe one-handed, we'll see. There we go, that's all secure. Oh, are, are you helping? Thanks. And then eventually the cord will go in there and come down. And that's the tabletop antenna. That is what needs to be within three to nine feet of the cell phone or Wi-Fi device at all times. Haven't decided where I'm going to put that just exactly. It doesn't have any mounting brackets or anything. It may be some Velcro or something. We'll see. All right, but we still need power. So we got to think about power because power happens at the booster itself, which would be the middle of the components if you're talking about the antenna, the booster, and the interior antenna. Power needs to be powered at the booster that I just installed up here. So it comes with a 110 volt power supply that you can just plug into any outlet, which might work great if you know you're always gonna be plugged in in an RV park, or if you have an inverter like me that runs off solar and that inverter then goes underneath and controls everything in this cabinet right there. So. These are normal looking 110 outlets, but they are being run off my pure sign and waiver off of solar and batteries, therefore giving me 24 hour power in this box right here. So I am going to use AC power just because it's more convenient for my setup, but this kit also comes with optional 12 volt where, you, is there a fuse? There's not a fuse in this package, but you could fuse it directly to your battery or tap in anywhere inside the RV that has 12 volt two wires and you could power the booster with 12 volt also. All right, everything is connected except power to the actual booster. This, plugging this into the back of that is the final step. For right now, I've got the booster just sitting there on top of my tombstone frame picture but I mean, I haven't even plugged it in to see if there's power. I know there's power. Let's do a test on my phone real quick, where we're at right now. You can see it says Cricut LTE, but uh, one bar of service. Let's do a, a speed test first. Okay. Looks like my downloads are going to be about 3.61 downloads. Now we'll do uploads. Ooh, 0.22 uploads here. 
not very good. This is a perfect test because I have really crummy service here. Let's do this test again. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Download is good! 16.2 download. And uh, upload is going to be drastically improved as well. Whew! 2.64. Wow, what a, what a great improvement. This is a simple test, really, because I'm, I've only tested it in one location. Um, I've only tested it with one network. It works with all networks. But I'm going to be utilizing this booster for both my cell phone and my internet. So let's move over to Wi-Fi on this and see what the difference is. Oh, let me turn the booster off real quick. All right, so we are connected to my network, Nomadic Fanatic. And let's do a speed test here without the booster on. 5.43 megabits per second download. And officially 1.1 megabits per second upload. We're uh, going to do another test here. Really? Is that what you think? Wow! 19.69 download. And 5.03 upload now! Woo! Now I know this test is not official, it's not like everybody else does it. In fact, the company WeBoost wants us all to test just the decibel gains. Okay, so they want they want to prove and they want to show you that yes, with this system, you're getting a higher decibel range of boost. Well, yes, clearly, I, I understand that, but I don't feel like telling you, well, I went from two decibels to 42 decibels in my booster. That's not telling you the effectiveness of it. That's why I chose to do speed tests instead of the before and after the booster because that's what that's what really matters you know what am I able to stream YouTube you know if it's down in the one to two megabits per second range I don't even think you can really watch Netflix or or stream a Seattle Mariners game you know but if you're up there over 15 to 19 to 20 uh, 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 downloads then I mean I can be watching something and uploading something clearly clearly this test proves that that booster is is grabbing a better signal from a cell tower amplifying in here and giving me more to work with which is going to improve my quality of life on the road as a YouTube creator uh, both for entertainment as well as getting those uploads done faster when I have good service uh, so that's that's my test again I know this isn't official I know this is just one location as well Later on, it might be interesting to revisit some of these places where I had no service, or I had one bar, but I couldn't even open up uh, Yahoo Mail or something. And maybe with the booster, now I'm able to uh, stay in that area for a couple of nights with service and be able to upload a video and interact, interact with viewers and stuff like that. So it will be interesting to see as the weeks and months go to see how this booster really helps change my life on the road. Otherwise, so far right now, I kind of have to recommend the device. I, I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm not being paid by the company or anything. They send it to me for free and they're like, do an honest review. Okay, that's pretty bold, but they knew. They knew what was going to happen. They, they knew it was going to improve everything. So, all right, I, I give it my official thumbs up. Um, a couple of other things I just want to point about out about the booster itself. Let's pretend like it didn't do what it says it's supposed to do, and that's boost the signal 32 times decibel what it was before. Even if it didn't do that, having the antenna outside and up away and making sure that everything I'm doing inside the RV, like my cell phone, my, my, my Wi-Fi hotspot, it's not depending on sight of line from my hand to the tower. Everything I do inside is now based on sight of line from this antenna to wherever the cell phone tower is. So even just having that changed right there might even be enough, but I'm pretty confident in what I'm seeing that it is literally boosting that signal to a crazy amount better than it was uh, before I started, before I didn't have a booster at all. But I got some work to do. I still got to seal the roof up there. I got to contact the wires down. I got to put some stuff away in here. But um, cool, more projects, more good stuff happening here 
on the road.